This is a video about the key chemistry topic of elements, compounds and mixtures. You might be learning about this as part of your Key Stage 3 science studies, or you might have just started GCSE chemistry. Before you watch this video, it's a good idea if you have a copy of the periodic table and also the accompanying worksheet. There's a link in the description below to get to both of those. In this video, we're going to define what we mean by elements, compounds and mixtures. And then we're going to move on to identify elements, compounds and mixtures, both from pictures and from chemical symbol formulae. In chemistry, elements are pure substances which can be used as ingredients to put together to make all of the millions of other chemicals that there are in the world. Even though there are only about 100 elements, they can be combined in various different ways to make compounds. Imagine for a second that you had a birthday cake. That birthday cake is made out of flour and sugar and butter and eggs. Now you could take those same ingredients and you could put them together in a different ratio and make a different food stuff. You could make pancakes or you could take just the butter and the sugar to make icing. So even though those ingredients are much more complicated than the elements we're thinking about, you can see how you can have a limited number of raw ingredients and then by putting them together in different ways, you can make different substances. There are about 100 elements and these are listed in a document called the periodic table of elements. The smallest part of an element that can exist is something called an atom, and each element has a slightly different atom. We'll learn all about atoms at a later date, but for now let's just say that one part of an atom is called a proton, and if we look at the periodic table, the first element has one proton in its atom, and then the second element has two protons, and the third element has three protons, and so on and so forth. We currently have the first 118 elements without any gaps but the last few have actually been made artificially in labs and they last for fractions of a second before they radioactively decay. It's possible that at some point in the future we might be able to make element 119 or 120, but we know for certain that we're not missing any elements because we already have the elements that have all the way from one proton through to 118. Now, for the time being, we're not going to worry about what the inside of an atom actually looks like. We just need to know that different elements have different atoms. So when we draw them, we tend to just draw a circle and we might draw the circle as a different size or a different colour to show that it's a different element. Now, one thing that's important to bear in mind is that an element is defined just by saying that all of its atoms are the same. It doesn't matter how many of them there are or how they're arranged. So, for instance, in the bottom right picture, we've got what we call a monatomic substance. So helium is a nice example of this. Helium doesn't form bonds at all, so it just goes around as single atoms, and that's an element. But above it, we have a substance where two atoms form a thing called a molecule. But this is still an element because it still only has one type of atom. Even though the atoms are bonded together, they're all still the same small white circles. There's just one type, and so this is another example of an element. There are only about 100 elements, but there are millions of compounds, and these are made when different elements start to bond together. So to be a compound, a substance must include more than one element, so more than one type of atom, here represented by the different coloured circles, and these must be chemically combined, which means bonded together, sort of the chemistry version of being stuck together with superglue. So you can see in my two pictures here that the different coloured circles are touching each other. This also needs to happen in a fixed proportion or a fixed ratio. So you can see in the top picture there are always two white circles for every red one, and in the bottom picture there are two red circles for every black one. It's not the case that sometimes there's only one black and one red, and sometimes there are two black for one red. There's always the same pattern. Compounds can be represented by a chemical symbol formula, like H2O or CO2. And what this tells me is how many of each type of atom there are bonded together to make a molecule or to make a lattice. Mixtures are a little bit harder to define because there isn't just one kind of mixture. A mixture is just anything that isn't an element and isn't a compound. So one thing we can say is that a mixture will contain more than one element or more than one type of atom. Now, it's possible that that isn't a compound because they're not bonded to each other. So, for instance, here we've got a box that roughly represents some air. We know that air is about four fifths nitrogen and about one fifth oxygen, and it's got a tiny amount of some noble gases in it like argon. So here we've got three different kinds of atom, but they're not bonded together, so they can't be a compound. And that's one example of a mixture. 
Another type of mixture would be where we do have different elements forming bonds and making compounds, but they're not always making the same compound because they're not always joining together in fixed proportions. So we've said that the Earth's atmosphere is mainly made of nitrogen with a bit of oxygen involved. And nitrogen is quite unreactive, but if it's in a situation where it gets very, very hot, then it might be able to react with oxygen. This happens if it's in a combustion engine or also if it's near lightning. So when that happens, some of the nitrogen might react with a little bit of oxygen to make some nitrogen monoxide, but some of the nitrogen might react with a bit more oxygen to make some nitrogen dioxide. Now, even though both of those are compounds, if I'm looking at a sample that contains both of them, then I would have to call it a mixture because the nitrogen and the oxygen aren't always in fixed proportions. So we can have a mixture of elements like we did on the last slide, and then this becomes a mixture of compounds and also elements, I guess, because it's still got the nitrogen and the oxygen in there. If you haven't already, now's a good time to pause the video and download the worksheet so that you can fill in the gaps in that first block of text and also so that you have a copy of this picture that you can write on. We're trying to identify whether each picture represents an element, a compound or a mixture. To recap, if it's an element, then all of the atoms will be the same type. So you're expecting to see circles of the same size and the same colour. If it's a compound, there must be more than one type of element, so you're going to have circles that look different to each other, but they need to be touching to show that they're chemically combined or bonded, and also they need to always be in the same proportion, so a fixed ratio, a fixed pattern. If it's not an element and it's not a compound, then it must be a mixture. So pause the video and quickly write down which one you think each box is. Hopefully you've managed to identify that there are three elements. Some people get a little bit confused about the first one because we've got more than one atom together and they look like they're bonded. But remember, the important thing is that they're all the same type. There are also three compounds. The top right and the bottom left represent molecular substances. And then um, on the bottom towards the right hand side, we've got this, which could be, say, an ionic lattice. So we've got different kinds of atoms and they're always in the same pattern. They're always going one black, one white, purple. And then that leaves us with two mixtures. Every element in the periodic table is assigned a one or two letter chemical symbol. The chemical symbol always begins with a capital letter. If there's a second letter, then this is always lowercase. So this means that when you're looking at a full chemical symbol formula, every time that you see a capital letter, that represents a new element. And we know if there's more than one element, then this must be a compound. Mixtures don't have chemical symbol formula because the symbol formula also tells us the ratio of those elements. So, for instance, H2O means that there are two hydrogen atoms for every one oxygen atom. And in a mixture, there isn't a constant ratio of different elements bonded together. Here's another task for you to do yourself. Look at the list of 20 substances and decide for each one whether it's an element, a compound or a mixture. Remember, every time you see a new capital letter, that represents a new element. Pause the video and write down your 20 answers. OK, here are some answers. So the first one is an element. This is hydrogen, the first element on the periodic table. Then comes helium, the second element on the periodic table. We know that this is still an element and not a compound because the E is not a capital letter. So even though there are two letters, there's only one element. The third one is a compound. This is water. We can see it's a compound because there are two different capital letters. The fourth one is methane, the stuff that comes out of gas taps. And this is a compound too, because again, we have two capital letters. The fifth one is sulfur, and this is an element. Lots of people start to get confused when they see the chemical symbol formula for elements where there's more than one atom in a molecule. So what this chemical symbol formula means is that in a sulfur molecule, there are eight sulfur atoms joined together. But because those atoms are all the same type, this is still an element. Sodium chloride or table salt is a compound and then nitrogen is an element. And the same thing applies here as with number five. Even though there are two nitrogen atoms, they're the same as each other, so it's still an element. Number eight represents carbon monoxide, a dangerous compound, not to be confused with cobalt, number nine, which is an element. 
you can see here how important it is that you make sure that it's really clear whether you're writing a capital letter or a lowercase letter, because it could completely change the substance you're writing about. Carbon monoxide is a colourless, odourless, toxic gas, whereas cobalt is a magnetic metal. Very different. Number 10 is bromine, which is also an element. Number 11 is silver, still an element, and number 12 is phosphorus, still an element. Number 13 is carbon dioxide, which is a compound because we've got two different capital letters. Then we've got element, compound, compound, compound. This one's glucose, which is the sugar that's made during photosynthesis and used up in respiration. That's going to be really important when you're doing biology. Then we've got an atom of oxygen and a molecule of oxygen, both of which are elements. And finally, some iron oxide, which is a compound. Thank you for watching and I hope this video was useful to you. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE chemistry videos coming soon.